Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Mutraja here, back with a new video lesson for you all. But first, coffee. This is actually the first time I'm shooting a video in the morning, at least this early. Anyway, in today's lesson, I want to talk about practicing in 12 keys. Should you do it? When should you do it? By the way, to answer the should you do it question, you have to, you should, you must. There's, that's non-negotiable, you have to. But how do we go about doing it? That's what we're going to look at. Before I do that, I'm going to take Teen Town and play it in the key of E flat. And let's see what happens. Oh. Okay, there were certain points I'm not sure if I played correctly. See, now I have to go back to F. Yeah, there we go. See, now I have to think in relation to the actual key. Um, so... That's minor third to major third. That's better. That sounds about right. Okay. Now, have you ever realized sometimes when you take a particular tune or bass line, and you transpose it to a different key, it doesn't sound the same, which actually happens whether you play the right note or not, because each key center has a different tonality to it. And that's one of the reasons we want to get playing in 12 keys into our practice. But should you sit and learn songs or standards in 12 keys? Or do you sit with arpeggios and scales in 12 keys? Well, you do a lot more of arpeggios and scales, but then when you take a song, you don't have to spend an awful amount of time to figure out playing it in a different key. What if I wanted to do teeth down in B? Okay, this is going to be really weird because it's a half step below the original. So I have to think. Okay, so one thing that guides me is the shape. Not bad. Okay. I didn't I couldn't play it in time, not like I could play the one in E flat in time. But what am I thinking about? Am I actually thinking about the exact notes? Maybe, but I'm actually trying to think of the motion. I'm trying to internalize the sound of the bass line in terms of a movement. And that is what helps me translate it into different keys. All right. And also I'm picking these keys based on my range. I didn't say B flat because to play B flat, I don't have certain notes below unless I had a five string. So if this is what you can do at the moment, nothing wrong with it, but take that in 12 keys at least. And please don't do this circle of fourths and, and then, then this. Okay. 
That barely took me, I don't know how many seconds, and I didn't put any thought to it. Take C major, move to F here, move to B flat here, E flat over here, A flat down there for a change, D flat up here, F sharp descending, B descending, open E for the E major, A major down there, D major up there, G on one string. I'm just trying my best to put some thought to it at least. Now we do two octaves, same thing. Try to go up, come back down, go right into the next one, F major. Okay, we already did circle of fourths, let's do fifths. G major. A major. See, this shows me that I don't practice my circle of fifths enough because I'm having to think of my actual notes, which is also why I find myself in weird positions to play the scale which is great. I'm strictly staying in a two octave range but the tricky part here is that when I'm not focused on what are the actual notes in the scale and I just run it mechanically I have a technical issue sometimes you might have noticed when I was playing the F major I came up to the E with my ring or something I need to review the video but I was coming up here because I'm so used to practicing scales in its entirety actually going beyond root and both directions below and above so f major for me is from he, this e to this d so in that mechanical process i was trying to go for playing more notes but then i was trying to wrap up at this f but my fingers were trying to do otherwise so when you sit down with your arpeggios and scales in this manner that's where you really build the foundation to then take whatever content you learn and just touch bass in 12 keys at least. You don't have to sit and play Cherokee in 12 keys. But I've been fortunate enough to have had the opportunity to play some standards in the most bizarre keys. I've done giant steps in D. I didn't sit down to memorize these things. I didn't sit down to necessarily practice them a lot. But it's something I just throw up a track and I'm like, okay, let me try playing this in this key today. I can do whatever standards I like, maybe four or five of them a day, put them across on a different key every day if I really want to instill this philosophy and thought into my practice. Now, same thing with arpeggios. Everyone does the, the Jaco thing, right? And everyone does it this way. Going up the neck on these three strings. What if I was to do it this way? which I'm trying to go up differently and down differently and then use this in 12 keys. So this is uh, C major. Okay, B flat. so on and so forth. 
whatever the exercises, whatever the arpeggio exercises, if I'm playing something sequential, root seven six. Next key. Next. Whatever I have as far as content, educational content and concept goes, I take that and I immediately get to it in 12 keys once I feel comfortable doing it in C. C is where a lot of us start. Let's not deny that. C major is comfortable, easy, no sharps, no flats, nothing much to think about. Start there. Once you get comfortable, move it immediately. Move it in the circle of fourths or fifths because that takes you in a specific direction and rounds you up back to C. Because if you do it in half steps, which is what a lot of bass players do, it's like, okay. I can do that for hours and not get anything out of it. Because all I'm taking is taking one shape and just going up and down. But if that is where you need to start, so be it. But eventually explore the circle of fifths and fourths. All right. I hope you get something out of this. Uh, that's about it really. I'll see you guys in the shed until the next one. Peace.